Hello everybody and welcome once again to Pneumatograph to Repressurize for Minecraft 116. So today we are going to automate the production of biodiesel. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is to set up a drone to put stuff into this chest here, as you can see, from the draw controller here. So I'm going to write a little drone program to do that. So in fact, I've already written some of it. So let's have a look at what this program's doing. So it's starting off here, it's going to sleep, and then it's checking if this position here, so we right click for that position, view the pro view the preview of the area, and you'll see that it's the chest over here. So if this chest has got more than 60, 64 or more item, items of, in this case, sugar, if it, it then it doesn't do anything otherwise it goes and gets some sugar so what it does is it goes over to this location here which is importing from the inventory so we'll double click this again and we'll have a look at that that'll be the that'll be the draw control over there and then it's going to import out of there some items so we'll have checked so it's doing any face of this and we're going to import 64 items then it's going to craft those items into sugar and after that, it's going to export the items to the chest that we've just seen. So these have got the same um, locations. And we're going to repeat this process. So we'll drag this down here like this, and we'll drag down the same. It's going to check the same area, so we're going to use the same place. And some will actually not call that. We'll call this one Needs Seeds. Like that. And then we're going to do the seeds. Now the seeds, are, we can use the seed item in here like this. So that's the same logic. So all we have to do then is repeat repeat this logic here, with the slight exception of we'll use this label here like that. Um, we're going to import 64 again, and this time we're going to same same location of course, the draw controller. This time we're going to import seeds, and then we're going to simply export those seeds into the same chest here. Now in this case, I don't really need to specify what I'm going to export them to because it just should just work. And then we're going to do exactly the same again. I'm going to repeat this block. Um, this time we're going to do it for potatoes. So let's just, now for potatoes we don't need to do anything with. Um, so all of these are going to be used, well actually not, let's be honest, I don't want that one. Uh, I want this one. Um, are going to be used in the production of ethanol and vegetable oil. So now we just need to do this bit. In this case, I've just specified up, and I'm using an account of 64. I probably don't need to do that again. So this is the chest we're going to you see. This is highlighted red. In fact, it says no area specified. It's just not true. You right-click again, press Escape. It disappears away. So, so I didn't want to have seeds in this case. And this one I want to name it Spuds, which, of course, is uh, English for potatoes. So we'll just repair, re do the same thing again down like this. With the same area, the same item as this one, and we want this label like that. And that should be all we need. Again, it's the same thing here, it's saying any. In fact, this time, well, let's, let's not do 64. Let's do 32. I'll just try to get rid of it. First of all, delete, of course. So any more than 32. So we'll only keep a stack of, up to a stack of potatoes. So in this case, we're going to export also 32. And in fact, in this, and the export, I'm not going to use a use count here. Just whatever's got in inventory, we'll put it into that chest. But we're going to fill up. We'll only have, ever have six, uh, 32 potatoes. So that should do. Let's see if this works. So the drone has got in it, actually it's got three inventory upgrades, which gives it four slots. Now if you look at this here, the maximum number of upgrades you can put into a drone is 35. And this is basically nine times four, that's 36 slots. And the drone has one slot free at the beginning. So we've actually got four slots, inventory slots free. So that's basically equivalent to four blocks like this. So let's get this put down and get it running. So it's the long, and it should pick up, first of all, it should pick up potatoes because it's got no potatoes in this chest. I think this chest actually does have in it a stack of seeds. Yes, yeah, so it's got a stack of seeds and a stack of um, sugar. So if we remove one item of sugar, it'll then come along here and re replace that. It does take quite a long time for the drone to come up here and put the potatoes in, as you see. 
it's got quite a long way to go but this time it should come along here and put in it's just going back at the moment as you can see it should then put in sugar and you can see it's got the sugar in it in its hand so to speak and it's coming across down through here it's going round the tree and here it comes now so this is going to now put one stack of sugar in here so let's have a look at this so we've got one stack and 63 sugar which is great so that'll won't come here again until we start to use these up so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start the automation of this now here is the automation of yeast and I've changed this a little bit I'm not sure this is going to work a hundred percent but before we do that let's have a look at this this is something actually I learned I didn't know this to be dead honest with you but here we have a, a, a repeater and that's pointing into another repeater so what normally happens when you press this like that that's going to get through there and it's going to stay on and if we make this longer it's going to stay on for a longer period of time like that now if you turn this one here on it puts a lock onto this so now when you press the button uh, would it have been better if I'd removed ah oh, yes <laughs> I've got pass through on here what I wanted to do in this one was to put a clock let's put in a clock in here now the maximum constant you can have in a clock is 127 so that's every 127 ticks is going to send a pulse now because this is on here if you look at this what it says here so it says when there is no input signal on the white channel which it has got at the moment the output will do uh, 15 every two ticks out of 127 ticks otherwise the output will be zero okay so it will do an input an output signal of 15 for two ticks and then it waits 127 125 ticks between the two times I think that's how it works so I think that's what it means so here this is blocked so now when I press the button here that light doesn't get that signal doesn't get passed through the repeater and get this lit up and the same is true here it's not pulsing this if I turn this off now we should see this pulse there you go so it's pulsing every hundred and 25 ticks which is about six seconds if you put it up to 128 I'll just show you what happens if you put it up to 128 I'm not sure whether that's intentional or not but it's because it it goes like that it doesn't work properly as, it, as it's supposed to doing and if you do it invert the output it's going to be on for 127 and then go off um, like that so that's what that's doing so what I'm doing the same thing here so here we've got the output tank, which is where the yeast culture is going to go into. When this is give it, um, gets full or partly full, this redstone comparator will emit a signal. So at the moment there's nothing in here, as you can see. It's got no signal at all because the tank's empty. And the difference between redstone dust and a redstone cable is that this, with the dust as it decays. So for example, this might be 15, so this block will be 14, 13, 12, and so on and so forth, until it gets to this repeater here. And then when that gets full enough, this repeater will be turned on and it'll stop the process here. So what's happening here is we've got this um, observer block. And the observer block will basically change output a pulse every time something happens above it. So what can happen above it is that we can get yeast culture being formed or we can get the yeast culture being taken away. So right, let's put the, let's put the yeast culture down. But before I do that, I want to put a dropper in here because this is going to trigger a dropper. Now, with a dropper, the easiest way to put a drop, dropper in is go basically like three blocks up, break the, the two blocks you don't want and then put the dropper in here above it. I haven't got a dropper with me I haven't but I've got one in my chest prepared I think um, dropper 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 there we go so if you get this in the right position like like that you shouldn't be able to see any particular holes through here where the, where the dropper's going out which is fine so now this red zone signal pulse here will pulse this and it'll cause it an item to drop out of here I did this with a hopper in the previous episode so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a bucket of yeast culture here and put it into this location like this so that's then going to spread across here and you saw it you saw it do a little flick there and a little twit but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put one water source block here 
I'm going to come around to the other side here and put a second water source block. And as you know, when this disappears, this will form another, this will create another water source block like that. So, so the next thing we do is we need to put sugar in here. And we just need to basically pulse this once to get it to run. So let's get some sugar out of um, this chest here. And rather than do that, let's do it through the, the way I'm going to do all of this stuff. I'm going to use, um, and they're probably in here. Yes, here they are. We're going to use logistics um, processes. So what we want to do is we want to have a provider. This is a passive provider. We're going to use this passive provider on um, this tank, on this chest here. We're going to put it down so it faces the top. So if we can press it like that. So you get the little red border here, which indicates there's the active side for the drone. Of course, you can change this here. And we don't need to specify what we're going to provide. It's, it's pretty obvious. Whatever's in the chest is what we're going to provide. And we know what's in the chest is basically seeds, uh, sugar, and potatoes, like this. So this is going to provide into this, uh, into this here, this dropper. We'll put a now we'll put a requester frame, and I'll do the same thing. I'll make sure it goes on the top like that. If you have you mess it up and you haven't got it on top, all you need to do is come along here with the configurator tool and change the side. So at the moment it's facing up, but you can change face any which way we want. So for example, we could have it facing west, which is towards, as you can see, the little blue border there. But I'd like it on the top because it's obvious what's going on. And the drone has, doesn't have to think too hard. Um, and then we're going to specify what we want. So in this case, we're going to specify sugar. And we're going to, we don't necessarily want very many sugar. So we'll just say four. So shift right click that twice and it'll then import four sugar. So the drone should think about it for a bit and pick it and put some sugar in here. Hopefully it does that. Sometimes you just have to re-break the, the drone if it doesn't react. And I'm not sure what causes it to react. Oh, because, <laughs> well, I am daft. What I've got to do is actually set up a logistics drone, haven't I? So let's do that next. So in here, I've got a logistics drone and I've got some Let's just sort these out of the way. Have I got enough spaces? Actually, I have got enough spaces. I don't need the buckets anymore. So we want these, take the drone out, plus these items. So we want the logistics drone to be able to carry f four items. We'll put it on here like this. So here's the drone. So we'll, we'll do the usual things for it. So it needs a security upgrade just in case it falls into water, and a life upgrade which will repair it if it gets damaged, and of course a standby upgrade so when it's not doing anything goes shuts down doesn't waste air and then we'll put in three inventory upgrades like this that'll do for the drone but we've got to be careful where we put it um because it does a 31 by 31 area so we have to be away from these other i want to make sure it doesn't try to access any of these um storage frames over here and i think if we put it just in front of this tank here like that now you'll see it's going and getting sugar and it's put the sugar in here so it's got four sugar in here this drone has got still got more than 64 sugar in here so it's not going to do anything for a while in fact what i can do is i can take this extra sugar i've got here and put it into this chest because it won't do any harm it just doesn't do anything for the time being like that until it actually runs out of sugar so now we've got sugar in here so all we have to do is give this a pulse um, one way to give this a pulse, in fact, is to take a bucket, which I should have probably kept with me. Let's just get the bucket out of here. Here. Where did I put the buckets? Oh, it's in here, of course, yes. So we'll just take one bucket's worth of fluid out of here, and then it should form. So if I remove this one here like this, you'll see that the water's formed like that, and then it goes off here and it's dropped a sugar down here. So we now, in this space here, there's a sugar. So we put this down here, and then that sugar will turn into yeast like that, and off it'll go again and keep doing the thing. Now, what I've made a mistake here is I haven't set the minimum order size. So let's set the minimum order size. Um, at the moment, it's set to one. So we shall set this minimum order size to, say, let's make it four. Sorry, not fluid. Order size here, four items, and make this um 
let's make it eight okay so that'll go and get eight items like this and put it down now this doesn't seem to be working quite right because it should have carried on um but we should we should have in here three buckets of stuff so I'm not sure why it's actually not dropped one more out but it's just a question of getting these timings correctly so if we just change this timing here to be one more block for instance come along with our bucket here take the bucket out of here you'll see it's dropped it across and you can see what's happening it's going through here fairly reasonably and producing quite a lot of fluid at the same time as that's happening we, you'll see that this is increasing so we've now got a redstone signal of three, and now a redstone signal of four. And as this gets full, and hopefully I'm not going to get it completely full, this is going to fill up redstone signal until it gets to here. So at the moment we've got a redstone signal of five. So that's six, seven, and then that when it gets to seven, it should automatically stop. It won't take much longer for it to stop one more block there we go so now this is locked up and it won't go and get any more uh, and you can see it's flashing I'm not sure why it is actually flashing but it shouldn't be going through here unless of course there, are, there was that extra sugar in here that was like this so when we remove stuff out of here this process can carry on again but it might not start so what we do in that case, if it doesn't start, I'll just use this process here. Set up a clock signal. Oops, I've just, I've just put a bucket of water down somewhere. Let's get rid of that. Pick up the redstone. Uh, and use this process for doing this. It might be easier to control it. Oh, I see, yes, of course, because the light's, the light's running. But that's one way to look at, at doing this. As you can see, this tank has now what, got 27... 28 buckets of fluid in it i'm not sure how many it's going to have in here oh it's going to fill up fill this tank up no problem whatsoever so now next thing we're going to do is we're going to carry along here and go to the next process so the next process is to make um ethanol and ethanol requires heat doesn't it so what it needs is it needs um yeast culture plus sugar will make ethanol but it requires heat so what we'll do is we'll put down here i've got a regulator tube with an advanced pcb on it but i'm going to do something else as well i'm going to take out of here whichever one it is a universal sensor so i've got a universal sensor here which isn't set up yet but it's got the um upgrades in it so we can do a block up update on it and i'm going to put this universal sensor here like that so it's going to be on there okay and then it'll emit this universal sensor will emit a redstone signal fortunately i've got some redstone with me now so we can put a redstone signal down here and you see it's on so what we're going to do for this universal sensor we're going to use the block upgrade one here and we're going to use heat and we're going to set a threshold of 45 and the reason we're going to set a threshold of 45 is to make ethanol let's have a look at that i'll try again ethanol is the grey one here so it requires a heat of between 30 degrees and 60 degrees which is 45 halfway between the two and of course we can make that with potatoes apples um, melons slices and sugar so we've, we've got one set of sugar we don't need to do anything else we could use potatoes of course and that makes 50 milli buckets and they all in fact make 50 milli buckets except for melon which makes 10 so there we so it's a good one to use so the next thing we have to do with this is we need to tell it which block we need to measure the temperature of. So the one we need to measure the temperature of is this one. Um, is is the process of thermoneumatic processing plant. So we can right click that on there and then we can take this and put this into here. Just shift, shift click it in and then that's going to measure the heat. Now you see it's going around and this signal is on. So when this reaches 45 degrees it's going to do that but of course it needs to be connected first of all let's just get a piece of pipe out of my inventory i think i've got some pipes in here we have yes like that and then just put this piece of pipe down here 
this red zone pointing to that but it doesn't have any effect it doesn't do any connections to tubes as far as i know so now this thing is heating up as you see it's not really at 32 degrees and it won't take very long and as soon as that starts to work it, it'll get hot enough and then this redstone signal will go off let's have a look at that and it needs sugar of course so let's give it some sugar while while that's happening we need another requester frame which i've got here so let's put one of those requester frames on this we'll do it again from the top because it's easiest in fact it's the only place the drone can actually access this like that I'm just waiting for it to go off as it, as it reached there yeah now it's now it's off and because this is thermally lagged it won't go back on again until it needs some more heat um oh um, this one has set up in a way i should have a look at how we set this one up let's have a look so it's set up with the lower pressure to being zero and the higher pressure to being uh, 0.2 which basically means when it's got no redstone signal in fact it just went on there like like this when it's got no redstone signal then it's going to produce zero bar and when it's got redstone signal it's going to produce 0.2 bar in here so at the moment it's got a no redstone so it's zero bar so now we can put some sugar into this let's get this set up in fact we might as well just do 64 items of sugar so let's just select this one there we go press and shift right click it until you get up to 64 in fact that is the maximum Okay, and then we also now you see it's going off. So in a second, <laughs> the drone's going to be very busy. So I'm going to make sure we don't do so many items. In fact, what we can do minimum order size, we can say 32. I will also say while well, we're doing, let's do 1,000 millibuckets of fluid because we do need fluid in here as well. So you'll see this is going round and it's smoking, so which means it's producing ethanol. Let's have a look. Maybe we can't see the ethanol in here at the time being because. Uh, it's going to be pushed straight out yes it's being pushed straight out and it's going straight into the mixer here so we should see ethanol increasing which you just saw great so that's working this is working we can stand on this we're not going to get burnt because it's only 45 degrees um i'm waiting for this to turn on and you can see it says 0.2 bar but that won't take too long so what we need to do is we also need to export onto here so what we're going to do is put a storage drawer on here let's do that so we've got here's a logistics storage uh, frame so we're going to put this on the tank and we'll do it on the underside of it if we can get it on underneath like this so we can put it get it in hand select it so there's the yellow bar and all it's and what we don't need to specify what we're going to store in fact well, the only thing that's worthwhile specifying on this is the amount of fluid i think it's got I know it doesn't have an upgrade it doesn't have an ability to tell you minimum order size so it'll always use us it'll fill itself up so that's going to get it's going to supply yeast culture into here when this gets used up um, and I haven't said that I need yeast culture into the into the frame here have I so we need to do that as well so here we go so we need yeast culture in here and that's all we need to specify and we can specify up to 16 buckets which is a maximum size that this can this tank has so now the drone will simply put into here let's have a look at it oh sorry you put the right tool so it should upgrade date this i think it takes a few seconds for the update to actually happen but we can also put onto this one here a um, passive active provider frame and what we're going to do with this is we'll just put the active provider frame on it. Okay, oops, wrong ball. And that will fill the storage frame up. So the drone should come along here and take some um, out of it and put it into there. So should do. When that tank gets uh, needs it, in fact, it should need it already. I'm not sure why it's not picking them up. But as I said before, you simply kill the <laughs> kill the drone, put it back again. It should then work. Um, where's it gone to this? It's underneath here, isn't it? But I'll leave it for the time being. Now it, oh, it was just on, then you just saw it go off again. So this is working perfectly. You look at the temperature on here, 47 degrees. It goes up a bit for for the amount of pressure it gets in here, and then when it reaches the top, it goes down again. So that's bit. So that bit's now automated. So the next thing we're going to automate is this, and this is the thermonumatic processing plant. Um, and this one here just needs pressure so what we need in here is seeds if we look at the recipes for this what we want to make is um 
vegetable oil and vegetable oil is this one so we just need seeds in here and pressure it doesn't need any temperature so we don't need to heat it in it we just need to pressurize it now you'll notice I've got no pipe connected to this and that's the reason for these is these are all connected together when you put down thermonium um, thermo pneumatic processing plants you'll, they automatically connect through and even with the you can see the, con the pipes here as it happens right so now we just need to put on here a request to frame like that and then we just need to specify what we want in the request to frame so we want again we'll set up the minimum order size here again we'll do 32 items um, we don't need to specify any fluids um, because we're only this is just an it's going to export fluids if anything um, so what we need to say is here we need seeds and here with the seeds we've got press escape and then shift right click till we get up 64 you can't go above 64 because you can hold it down and right click if you like so now the drone should pick this up here the drone's a bit stuck at the moment that's no big deal we'll just get the drone out of here get him on the get him on the move again if i can if i can't i'll have to break it I mean, maybe at the same time as i break the thermal um lagging so let's see if i can hit the drone no i can't get to the drone so remove that thermal lagging then we'll remove the, the drone and put the thermal lagging back again And then we need to come over here and put the drone down again. In fact, what we can do with the drone, let's enable Entity Tracker. So in my case, I've programmed Control T. And let's put the drone down again. Wherever it's gone to, I can't see. Oh, there we are. See it? And then it's going to go off. And you can see what it's doing now. Is it's taking fluid around here. Uh, sugar into here. I think it's got some sugar in here now. Seven. And then it should be taking some fluid out of here each time it comes along. Let's press shift on it. We should see. Oh, it's 20 buckets already because it was full, wasn't it? This storage tank is now full, as you can see. Um, and now it's sitting again doing that. So this one's also running, as you can see here like this. And that's got 60 60 seeds in that so that's working pretty well and the other drone should be coming along here whenever this gets empty so it's got 60 and it's got plenty of sugar as you can see and it's got enough wheat seeds so now the next thing to do after this is we need to automate this now there's a problem with this we have to extract out of here glycerol because if we don't as you can see it's stopped um so let's just remove all we need to do to do that is have a um provider frame or well, let's put onto here a requester frame because i've got this um storage drawers with request with some glycerol in it so i'll need to specify like that i think i might need to use the front face for this because you can only put it in on the front face so let's just make sure we've got the, the minimum order size let's make set, set that to 16 for instance and the side we want is the west side i think that's that one so the drone can come along here and then feed this with glycerol in fact it should have already done that and i'm not sure why it hasn't so what the first what you can also do with these and it's actually quite a simple process let's oh no i don't want to do that i know exactly why that's not working let's get out of this chest here a hopper and in fact you might well have noticed this what what the reason this is not working is it's got 150 items in here and i've said just pick up 64 so let's remove this like that and in fact what i'll do is put that into my inventory because it will keep the settings until we actually do something with it and then um put the hopper on top of this like this and then this time it doesn't matter which side we put the face on so let's put this one like that so the hopper can take it in any case now this is never going to have more than 64 items in here so it's got a hopper let's check the, let's check the thing make sure it's ah we lost the glass so i haven't specified yet have i yeah <laughs> let's look here we go and in fact what we can do is shift right click this again here like this make it 64 and then minimum order size 16 so it did remember that good yes so now 
this should start to increase as soon as the drone finds out it's got to do it you will then come along here and put stuff into here if it doesn't all you can do is you can put a hop in and underneath this and it will take the items out of here so let's just take the items out of here first of all what do I got no on this one oh, of course not <laughs> I've not set a provider frame on this have I so let's put a provider frame on it and we can then provide, of course, then we're providing biodiesel. And we're also providing glycerol. And that's, now it's gone and done it. So we've got 160, well, actually, however many you put in a stack, basically. So as soon as that gets down again, it will start to take out another 16. Phew. So now this should be running as well, which it is. So every time that builds up enough, it's going to go through here. And you can see that the vegetable oil is increasing. The ethanol is probably also increasing. And this is going down. So now we can provide biodiesel. So we just need to put a requester frame on over here. It's going to put a requester frame on the end, on the motor itself. And this time we're going to specify biodiesel on it. So let's do that. Again, we're going to let's right click this one. Biodiesel is the first one like that and we can specify 16 buckets like that and then we'll set the minimum order size facing up I thought I'd do it. am I oh that's the passive provider frame I want to don't want to do the other one sorry let's remove that now in this case I've got where did it go to oh there this time it doesn't connect back in. Now to get that or stack again, because it's got different settings, so just craft it on itself and it'll just then stack again. Let's try that again with the right with the right one. Biodiesel. And this time we don't want minimum order size, so it's going to be at least thousand well, every time it gets a bucket full now at the moment it's not going to do anything because if you look at this it's still got a little bit of kerosene in here so when the kerosene is up used up it then start to put 16 buckets of bio diesel into here and and then replace it whenever it gets down to one bucket 15 buckets so that's how that works now there's one more thing we need to do and that's this one here let's put on this one potatoes I'm going to put a this is actually you'll notice this has got a heater and it's underneath it I've got a torch like that and the temperature of this one is 1320 very very hot actually 1327 degrees from one torch it does build up over time even with torches so what we can then do is we can specify along here um, this one and we can say what we want is to put in potatoes okay like that in fact one potato will do and then the drone should come along here and put in a potato which it has done so let's well that's probably also going to have to request something else we're also going to have to request vegetable oil um, and again we can specify 16 and this is making chips and maybe one potatoes will keep this too busy so let's just change the number of this and also do vegetable oil vegetable oil is this one let's make that 16 and let's just make this four and then give the minimum order size of two it won't take very long before this has actually filled itself up with chips we've got 32 chips now let's take those out and come along here and see what we can use these for so the uses of chips is to make fish and chips or cod and chips so what we need is some cooked cod and some paper. I've got those already prepared in this chest here like this. So we've got 64 of those. Let's take 32. Let's halve that. I've got already got some chips as well. So what we can then do with these is just to craft them. So if we can do the uses of the chips again, we can make cotton chips. And we've got 32 cotton chips. I've got four chips left over. So I've had more than I thought. Um, and then we have a look at the uses of this it gives you six food and 12 saturation so let's go and put this now straight away into our um, aerial interface that's doing the feeding so that's the one with the dispenser upgrade then from now on i'm going to get cotton chips uh, until they've run out and then after that i'm going to get something else we're going to get sour bread dough 
which is also a very good one as, as it happens. Not as quite as good as cotton chips, but not far off it. In fact, I'm nearly, nearly got, and I'm, I'm nearly hungry. So let's just run a bit. Let's just press um, control and run. I'm pressing shift. <laughs> if you run a bit, oh, there we go. It'll use up your food quite quickly. And as soon as it goes down, you've got been fed with cotton chips, and you see my saturation is now 100%. I'm not sure if it, if it has a hidden saturation, so we keep saturation going for quite a while. So I think. Now the only problem I've got is that this, when it goes down a bit here, this goes off, it's not going to start clocking again, which is what I suspected. So what I'll do is I'll just dump this and just put this this contraption in here, because um, it's going to work much better and it's much simpler and it's much more um, pneumaticraft based anyway. So all we need to do for this is, we can get rid of all this redstone here like that. We want this one because this is the one that's telling us it's full. Like that. Let's pick up the semi magnet on and pick up the redstone that's been floating around. Um, so we just need to clock it. So we put down the, the, the tube here. We'll come across this side here and we'll put on this face um, the redstone sig the redstone can yeah the redstone module like this. And then we're going to put the redstone, another redstone module on here. You've got to put a redstone module on here. You can't just do it by using redstone. So we right click that, so that's a receiver. And this is the transmitter. You will need one piece of dust of redstone down here like that, as you can see. And then we're going to set this up as a clock. So now we need, what we need to do is we need to add an advanced PCB. Otherwise it doesn't, you can't get the access to the other items in here. So we want to set this as a clock and we want to set it up as a clock with 120. Um, maybe we need it less than that, I don't know. Like that. So that's now going to pulse. And I've got my magnet on, so let's just turn my magnet off again. Magnets. Oh, which isn't able to. Sorry, I'm probably too close then. Let's get out of the way. So this is now going to pulse. And you can see it's going through. Like that. Sends the sugar go through and this goes up. This goes up and it'll fill up until it reaches a certain level. And um, there might be one slight thing I should do, and that is here, to add some speed upgrades. But it looks to me as though this is not going up too fast. It's keeping it it's keeping speed up with what's coming in, as you can see. Here we go. And it doesn't need that much yeast culture anyway. But there's a problem here. I've got one problem that should sometimes the sugar drops out. So we better go and pick it up because the reason the problem with that is it, it'll, it might go into this block water block here and then cause that water block to become yeast culture and then this process breaks but i don't think that's going to happen too often so there we are now there is one more thing i forgot to mention last time i'd forgotten about it to be done as we if we look at the uses of biodiesel if yeah, where's it gone to it's vegetable oil Oh, of course it's the first one in this thing here look for the uses of this we can use this to make um, lubricant and we can also use this with charcoal to make molten plastic now it's interesting this because if we look at the recipe for molten plastic there has been a change so with LPG you can use coal before you could use coal or charcoal so I've got at the back of this base over here a uh, setup from producing help producing molten plastic so I've now got to go and fix that because it's not going to work anymore because I've got in there both coal and um, so it's over here and do this one in fact that one also doesn't yeah that one also doesn't work uh, yeah in fact that one should work oh, that's because I'm not turning on this uh, there's a problem somewhere along there you, that's it that's it problem is that this one's actually set in the wrong way this is now a, uh, res a transmitter somehow it got changed don't ask me how so this should turn this on and this should start to run again this one on the other hand is producing an output here which means it's got a valid recipe 
when it hasn't got a valid recipe because it's using charcoal. So what we do is we just fix the charcoal and delete it. We don't want any charcoal. So middle button will get rid of that, like that. So then it will work with coal. So we have to get the charcoal out of it, of course, like this. Like that. And I think that's it. Let's put the charcoal back into here because it's no, she's not coming from there. Let's go and make some coal and I'll put it in that chest. I'll see you in a second. Right, I've got some coal, I'll put it into it. Put one and a half stacks into it. It's already taken out a stack of here like that. And of course this is now and this is a valid recipe. And but this is turned off. I would have to do the same setup as over here for that to be automatic. Uh as it happens, I don't need very much plastic at the moment <laughs> because um, oh, I don't need much plastic because I'm basically doing trading with, with um, villagers and getting most of the plastic requirements from there. So there we are. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Next time, I'm going to go back to the nether to look at the um, mining program that we were had the, in the previous episode or one but previous episode because Dest has made a lot of changes to the programmable controller uh, which functions much better for that type of operation so anyway until next time I wish you all the best bye for now